All praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Lord of all the worlds. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls and the evil of our deeds. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can lead him astray. And whoever he subhanahu wa ta'ala leads astray, there's absolutely no one that can guide him. I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final and last messenger sent to mankind in jinn. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forever shadow his peace and blessings upon the Prophet, his companions, and those who shadow their footsteps into their day of judgment. The last two ahadith from Kitab al-Iman today, which we're going to conclude with this chapter, with this book from Sahih al-Bukhari, is the first one is called, What Has Been Reported or What Has Been Recorded About Actions Being Built on Intentions. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu anna rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-a'malu bin niyat. He said that actions are by intentions. And everyone will have that which he intended. So whoever migrated to Allah and his messenger, then his migration is to Allah and his messenger. And whoever migrated for some worldly gain, or for a woman to marry, then his hijra is to that which he migrated for. In another hadith collected in this chapter on Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala and who narrated that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that if a man spends on his family and he intends Allah's reward for huwa lahu sadaqa, then it is considered as a charity for him. In the last hadith in this chapter, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّكَ لَا تُنْفِكَ نَفَقَةٌ تَبْتِغِي بِهَا وَشْحَ اللَّهِ That you will be rewarded for whatever you spend for Allah's sake. إِلَّا أُجِرْتَ عَلَيْهَا You'll be rewarded for it. Hatta until, even so much so, مَا تَجْعَلُوا فِي فِيهِ امْرَأَتِكَ Even by putting a piece of food in the wife or in your wife's mouth. So he said, you will be rewarded for whatever you spend for Allah's sake. Even placing a piece of food in your wife's sake. What do we benefit from this hadith, these hadith in this chapter? It shows us that we must be sincere whenever we do things for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. And when we do them sincerely, anticipating Allah's reward, then we will be rewarded for them. This hadith in actions are based by intention. This is one of the four hadith that Islam is built on, that Islam is built on and centered around, as many of the scholars have said. When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned that if a person spent on his family anticipating Allah's reward, then this shows that Imam al we mentioned that the maintenance that a person spends on those who depend on him is from amongst the best acts of obedience. It's from the best acts of obedience and a person will absolutely be totally rewarded for that when he does it, anticipating Allah's reward in this life and in the next life. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the reward in both. In the last hadith, he mentioned that a person will be rewarded for whatever charity he does, even by putting a piece of food in his wife's mouth. Now this here is good for the husbands to practice, to strengthen the relationship with the wife. Put a piece of food in your wife's mouth. Literally as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is what is, this is what is or this is what is apparent off of the text of the hadith. Placing a piece of food in your wife's mouth. You cut that steak up, put it on the fork, tell your wife to open her mouth, have dinner with her sometimes at the dinner table and do this act. It's a sadaqah for you. And if you do that seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward, then inshallah you will be rewarded for that. Another benefit we get from those three ahadith is that if a person makes hijra for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to facilitate for him whatever he migrated for, as long as he does that sincerely. And if a person comes for worldly gain, then he will only be rewarded for that worldly gain which he migrated for. The last hadith in this chapter is the hadith known 
is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It said, Ad-Dinu Nasiha Lillahi wa li Rasulihi wa Immat al-Muslimin wa Ahmadihim. That the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's speech, he said that the religion is sincere advice to Allah, to His Messenger, to the rulers, and to the common folk. And to the common folk. The last hadith in that chapter was related or reported by Jarir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu who began by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day when Mughayra ibn Shu'bah died. Jarir he got up, Jarir he got up on the minbar and he began and thanked Allah and praised him and said be afraid of Allah alone who has no partners with him and nothing else should be worshipped along with him. Be calm and quiet till the new chief comes to you and he will come to you soon. Jarir then said, ask Allah's forgiveness for your late chief because he loved to forgive others. Jarir added, now then, I went to the Prophet and said, I give my pledge of allegiance to you for Islam. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam conditioned my pledge to be sincere and true to every Muslim. So I gave my pledge to him for this. By the Lord of this masjid, I am sincere and true to the Muslims. And then Jarir, he asked for Allah's forgiveness and got off of the member. This hadith, likewise, it has an important benefit. And Imam Anawi, rahimahullah, he said that Islam, likewise, is centered around this hadith. And what is connected in that is that it's a fourth of Islam. This is what Imam Anawi we said, that it is a fourth of Islam which is an important part, which is that Muslims, we give advice to other Muslims, a deen and a And this is connected to advising your brother, wanting good for the Muslims, wanting good for everyone who you come in contact with, who says the shahada on his tongue. Now, what is nasiha to Allah? Nasiha to Allah, Imam Anawi, he said, it is belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and neglecting shirk and abandoning, rejection of his attributes. Abandoning the rejection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes. And you describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a complete manner that he has described himself. And you don't describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with any deficiencies or with any newly innovated descriptions. And you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in what he has commanded. This is nasiha to Allah and you avoid his prohibitions and you love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake and you love the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and you hate for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake and you hate the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you have allegiance to those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered that you have allegiance to and you disassociate yourselves from those things and those people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered you to disassociate yourself with. Another nasiha to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we acknowledge His blessings that He has given us, which we are not able to count. We are not able to count His blessings. Another way of nasiha to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we have sincerity for all of the things that we do for Him. Another way of nasiha to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we supplicate to Him for all of the things that we need and want. Nasiha to His book, to the Qur'an, is that we believe that it is the speech of Allah sent down to Jibril, sent down to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is not handmade, it is not written, and no one from the jinn or human being, even if they both came together, both races and species of people, they would not be able to produce one surah. We magnify the Qur'an, we respect it and honor it. Respecting and honoring the Qur'an, there was an issue that came up a few weeks ago uh, about kissing the Qur'an. Kissing the Qur'an is no harm in doing it if it's done ta'dhimuhu. As the Imams have said, Abu Hanifa has said, Imam Shafi has said, and so have some of the Hanabila, but Imam Malik denied it. And this was done actually by one of the Sahaba by the name of Ikrama. Ikrama, he used to kiss the Qur'an and put it on his forehead and say, Kalamu Rabbi, Kalamu Rabbi. He wasn't doing this as an act of ibadah. He wasn't doing it as an act of ibadah. And if anyone wants any further detail about this article, you can refer back to my website 
abualiyah.com, www.abualiyah.com. Uh, so kissing the Quran for ta'deem, for having respect and, and as it's the speech of Allah, then there's no harm in that, and it's not an act to be bad, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Um, the sihah to the book is also to read it correctly, to contemplate on it, to reflect over its meanings, to reflect over its meanings. Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, why did he close off with this hadith? Imam al nawawi he said that he closed this chapter of his book, this book of Iman with Nasiha, to show that he acts and he acted on and he guides others to act on authentic hadith and to avoid those hadith that are fabricated. And then the very last hadith he mentioned was the hadith of Jarir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And what is inside of that hadith is the speech is it will come to you soon. A leader will come. The Mahdi will come. The Mahdi will come. And whatever fitna we go through in this life, Imam al-Bukhari is advising us to hold firm to the Sharia. Hold firm to the legislation of the, of, the, of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until the Mahdi comes. And then Imam al-Bukhari is also pointing out that there will always remain a group of people, Ta'ifatul Mansur. There will always be a, an aided group. Wahum fuqaha ashab al-hadith. They are the scholars of fiqh and the narrators and the scholars of hadith. So this chapter, my brothers and sisters, we learned that Imam al-Bukhari reiterated throughout its chapter that Iman is speech on the tongue, belief in the heart, and actions on the body part. We learned in the chapter of Iman that sinners, if they die with belief in Iman in their hearts, that they will not remain in the hell fire forever. We learned that kufr is two types, one that takes a person out of Islam and one that doesn't. We learned that nifaq is of two types. One that takes a person and places him in the hellfire forever, and one that is hypocrisy of actions. We learned that dhulm is shirk. We learned that we have to respect the sahaba. We learned that we have to do actions. We learned that there's a virtue in standing in Ramadan. We learned that actions of righteousness removes our sins. And the last hadith we learned was he closed it off with the importance of ikhlas the importance of sincerity, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sincerity. Inshallah ta'ala, next week we will start the book of heart softeners from Sahih al-Muslim with the explanation from Imam al Nawawi and others. If I said anything that's incorrect while teaching you, then this is from myself and from shaitan, and anything that was correct as reported by our scholars and the imams from the salaf, walhamdulillah, which is rahimahullah khayran, wa subhanakallahum wa bihamdika, ashadu wa la ilaha ala ant, astaghfiruka wa tubu